Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake, and have I got a good one for you. So, um, I think I will be labeling this one Life as Laboratory. Um, this is a review, a bit, and then I'm going to tell you what happened. So, I uh, believe in my heart of hearts, because I've had the experience and I no longer can say that it's not true, that there um, are things that happen in my reality now uh, for the last, I don't know, a couple of years um, <clears throat> that happen that are just the same that has always happened before, okay? So let's just give you an example. There was one time when I, I lost my phone. It was in, I, I wrote about it, I think 2014. I lost my phone. <laughs> I couldn't afford to buy a replacement. And yet, I couldn't afford to be without a phone. And did I do it to myself? Well, yeah, obviously. I couldn't find it, and it's my phone, so there you go. Whose responsibility is it? Well, that would be me. And so... I uh, kind of went, okay, well, I guess the next thing to do then is to buy a phone. I got in my car, and I drove to the store, to this phone store. And I parked my car, and then I reflected, and I realized, and I said to myself, golly, look at this. This is a pretty upsetting vignette. I mean, considering, considering everything, um, it makes really kind of good sense to be upset about this and yet I'm not because I know that everything's cool and, and I, if I can't find it and I've used my tools for finding things and I can't find it then well this is the next thing I'm not going to beat myself up about that and the money will be there it has to be so let's do this thing and I then I look down why I don't know in my car, look down, and in between the uh, engine console thing and my seat sat my phone. And then I realized, because it came to me, okay, this was, because I can always hear the, the, the celebration when I do it well, I can hear everybody uh, celebrating up in heaven or whatever. Yay! She did it! And so there was a little bit of that celebration in the air. And um, and I realized, wait a minute, I'm the one who set this up to see how I would react. Am I going to react like a... Am I going to react in self-pity? Am I going to respond with a depression cycle? Uh... A shame spiral, uh, victimization, blaming. What am I going to do about this? Am I going to once again believe that life isn't worth living because I lost my phone? Hmm. I did none of those things. I just drove to the store and solved my problem <laughs> and found my phone. So the message was clear to me from that time forward. So last night, I had a number of downloads. It was a tremendous night. And um, I, I, I continue to feel quite healed fundamentally from some of the things that I'm being taught and shown. Um, and... Um, I guess it, for instance, would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um, I realized that I hadn't really read deeply enough into my uh, essay called Obedience. Because what I was trying to express was this person I used to be, that I had grown disobedient to, who was and remains a... Um, pure soul and um, 
the only way that I can describe this individual is uh, clever as a serpent and wise as a dove or an owl or whatever. Like an apostle. Like that. That my love for God was so pure. And along the way I lost that. I feel that way when I read um, about Hinduism and I read about uh, and, I, and I read um, sacred Hindu texts. I feel that way when I read the Bible as it were study the Ascended Masters. I feel that way when I read certain poetry, sure, when I'm out in nature. It's that feeling. But it's knowing that I am God's and God is mine. And, I mean, being so clear with that, that really that's the only way that I look at anything. And so last night, that was one of the downloads, was, um, you know, really now looking at uh, sort of a return to center. Yes, after gathering all this data, sure. But um, a return to what I know is real and true about who I am. And they kept saying, you know, it, it's about really identifying what's right for me. Just for me. And now, finally, letting go from my uh, clenched jaw, the pit bull I am gets to stand down, finally, and release this puzzle that is the other. So, the companion piece to this is a piece that is uh, quite unusual, and I'll be doing that next. But uh, that was one of the things we've so easily forgotten today. Till now. But still, never totally forgotten, which I'm really pleased about. So one of the things was, at the end of all of this, I realized, you know, <clears throat> something that I may have not expressed very clearly in the moment, but I really needed to write down. So I did on Facebook last night. It's called Deeply Awake on the Fly. <laughs> when I just can't get to the video thing, I can't get to the word processor, but I need to express to make sure something's anchored. And the idea was that, you know, um, always I've, I kind of always just think that I'm walking into energy that is, I don't know, not quite right. Uh, don't forget I'm a nurse. <laughs> if I told you <laughs> what I see and what I've seen, <laughs> you wouldn't believe me. So trust me when I tell you that I deal with uh, complicated and difficult interpersonal and uh, emotional situations in my profession with people who are stressed and compromised. So that's my frame of reference. And then I've got really very, very healthy friends, really. I'll explain myself pity. But yeah, I've got friends that are not like that. I, I long ago realized, uh, see here, I need the healthy around me. I need the healthy um, dinging me and uh, accompanying me and greeting me. I do not... Mm, I, I'm, I'm not here to do the healing dance on my off hours. Nope, nope, nope. It's not what my life is about. Uh-uh. Nope. And I've, I've really had to ponder whether that's healthy. 
because it, it leads to a perhaps discompassionate stance uh, of a sort of you're on your own kind of thing with, I mean, in the end, you got to figure out a way to manage what's going on in your life. I can help, but you've got to figure it out. Now, how can I help you figure it out? If you want to, but maybe you don't. I mean, you brought it up, so if you want to talk about it. Like that. Not not any of the weirdnesses that uh, the passive aggression and the just the just the stuff that is uh <laughs> yeah I've had enough of that this lifetime no you don't get to you don't get to come in my front door mm -hmm. so I vet people I, I, there's very there's there's a lot that I won't tolerate uh, just shenanigans and bullshit this drama endless suffering no no if you're into endless suffering then you get to uh, you get to go I, I don't have I don't we're, we're not going to be friends we'll be acquaintances but we won't be friends because I'm actively trying to deal with my chaos and my nonsense and the less of it the better and I don't need it around me. So I kind of operate that way. And I don't like it. I don't like drama. Chaos. I don't like it. So. <laughs> last night, one of the last things I got was, um, alright, so imagine you your, your life is the way you want it. Right now, in this environment, in this apartment. We know you want to move. But in this environment, Everything is as you want it to be. You have the resources, you have the income, you have the lifestyle, you have it all now. How am I behaving? What am I believing about myself? How am I thinking about tomorrow as I lay down to go to sleep? How do I feel when I wake up in the morning? What's uh catching my interest, keeping me busy. Who am I hanging out with? How did my days go? And I looked at it and realized, well, I sure am going to need more discipline. And I need to really commit to the physical. Really commit to it. I mean, not to the perpetual motion part of it, but, um, you know, the just, you know, keep your head down and stay in line. Not like that, no. But just to honor the ebbs and flows and do what I know needs to be done. Come on. And then today happened. <laughs> and I realized on the way home, oh, oh okay, that fast? Really? And they said in their in their voice, well, yes, you, it, it's ready now. You are ready now. And so, yes, you added it up, and here it is. We say, check all manifest. And you would be surprised, the benevolence coming out of this one. So we say, strap in, and fear not, fear not. This is all benevolent. You look back and you'll know. Trust us now. Listen. And be still. Be of good cheer. And fear not. So, the thing is that um, I received an onslaught of um, financial news that is really pretty breathtaking in its uh, gravity. <sighs> fuck. It's one of those, f oh, f oh, fuck, kind of things. Just fuck. <laughs> I was finally, finally, finally just pulling ahead. Finally. Well, of course. Of course. 
yeah, we wouldn't want it to be too comfortable, would we? But it's not what this is about this time. And I knew it right away, but first I had to go through the spiral of what it's like to be alone and handed more than you think you can do. If you have a partner, then you don't understand what I'm talking about. You don't understand it. You can sit there and think you do, but you don't. Single moms know what I'm talking about. You have reached your limit physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And you have to keep going. You have no other choice. And there's no one around to lift a finger. Plenty, plenty, plenty of people who want to tell you how you could do it better. And for me, a few choicely placed people who not only did that, but made sh damn sure I knew that I was nothing because I wasn't living up to their standards without assistance. Damned. Before I even took a step. That was my reality. And again, you don't have to believe it, but <laughs> I wish I had recordings. <laughs> so, that kind of shit breeds paranoia. When your back is against a wall and you go to the only person in the world who can help you and they laugh at you and make fun of you and make you feel small and inadequate and less than nothing because you created your own pain and in your pain you get to get laughed at. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I got to grow up with. That's That's been my reality. And you know, it doesn't have to happen all that often. But for me, it happened at peak moments when I was in extremity. And there is nothing else like it. To have only one hope and to have that hope. <laughs> Turn around and walk away in disgust. So, I get handed a whole bunch of shitty, shitty, shitty news. And yeah, you, th you think I might go there? Yeah. Oh, I'm a loser, la la. I see, I don't even, I don't, and then I realize, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need any kind of peanut gallery. <laughs> it is irrelevant. It no longer exists. It is completely internalized. Isn't that nice? Aw. Aw, it's the gift that keeps on giving. But yeah, I realized, okay. Once I started feeling it, and then when it, when this feeling of just desperation and desolation and futility and just feeling horrible about myself spreads to, yet yeah, no one loves me, no one shows up for me, I'm all alone in this world, it's on and on. Where's God then? Where's the light? Where's the truth? Where's the benevolence? absent. <laughs> it's just all drama, right? It's just drama. And this was on top of a, a, a really inappropriate thing that happened and I, I didn't respond particularly well. I responded as I always do, which is just to 
stare at it and then be angry until I can figure out what the hell just happened. I just got bitch slapped uh, while I was being hugged. And I, what the fuck? Like that. So it just was a fucked up day. And it really, at the end of it, all I know is that I don't have... I have, I have nothing to complain about. My sweet friend Melissa was, boop, she was right there. <laughs> I was, and, and she just reached out and loved me in a moment where I just so needed that. And then when I said, I feel better, I feel so much better. Thank you so much for being there for me. Thank you. She said, ah. The observer still comes up. And really, on the way home, I saw this visual very strongly, that I really do think that's what this is. The, the, we're on a, a, a track. I really like the <clears throat> visuals that I've seen before of a track where the same signs keep popping up as you go. And maybe, you're, maybe you've switched train sets even, but you're on the same track. So the same uh, signs come up at, at you know varying intervals. Well, you know, it's very easy for me, after doing the work I've done, to get to a day like today and go, What? I magnetize. I'm not a shit magnet anymore, you guys. So, come on. What? What is this? Don't you remember, you guys, that I, I, I rescinded my shit magnet status? We're not going to do that anymore? Where I say, Oh, I can't imagine how it gets worse. It cannot get worse than this and then it gets worse yeah no more of that crap that's dumb and here I have a day like that what the what's up with that <laughs> well it's it's exactly the same thing that has happened in my life uh I don't know, since about 2004. From time to time. And sure, I can see the mechanics of it and I can see precisely why it happens to me. I'm not stupid. Um, but you know how you get that feeling of, oh, I thought I had this handled. Well, obviously, I don't have this one handled. But... It's it's okay now because my observer self is here. When it said that we are self writing, that we are we are you know we always come back to center. I think that's what it is. We are, well, yeah, because we're aware that we've got a higher self. We're aware that we have an observer self, who a wise self, and this wise self who has a much longer vision than us who walks beside us every day of every lifetime we've ever lived I think the point is to get to the place where that's the person who's doing all of the business because I, I think that it's the yeah there might be setbacks in this lifetime sure I think that's kind of the name of the game and maybe it isn't three steps forward and two steps back. Maybe it's, you know, there's still movement forward. And it's not always like that. I've been sprinting, haven't I? For months and months and months. And that's part of the problem, is just not being connected to physical reality very well. <laughs> so it falls apart from time to time. Doy. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? So, you know, with good humor... I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't say a ding-dang thing except on Facebook, and it was very pretty about any of this. I didn't, I didn't act out in any way. I just observed it, but I sure felt it. And I didn't feel bad about feeling the feelings I was having, which ranged from, I don't know, panic to grief to fear to just... <laughs> resignation that horrible horrible resignation I used to feel all the time so let's be really plain about this how I spent 
I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe, at the most, this afternoon. Um, you know, culminating in just a really, really good and, I would say, totally appropriate cry. Wow. That's how I felt all the time. All the time. I felt everything was futile. I didn't really want to live. I would prefer I would have preferred not to have been here. I was this big huge sad Zack. And just perplexed with everything just because it hurt so bad. Everything hurt so bad. <laughs> oh my god. It was really hard there for a while. <laughs> And I'm sure very hard to be around me. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> but, you know, we all go through phases. And I did have that phase. And now, yes, I, yeah, I, I, I did, I did turn into a bit of a crap magnet. Okay. But they're lessons. And I'm doing it to myself. And basically, it's to make sure that I um, have enough common sense to realize that um, I'm actually doing this for my own benefit. I'm actually helping myself. And it's got nothing to do with once again screwing up and once again just standing in line to get beat up. No. That, that's done. That's over with. It's done. And, you know, I have no ill will, really, I guess, toward the behavior that triggers me so much of just, you know, authoritarianism and you got it wrong and I get to lord it over you and all that bullshit. It just, it's old and it's mean. It, it, it celebrates other people's discomfort and trouble because it's not yours and you did it right and they did it wrong and ah oh, it's just nasty so to end I'm going to tell you something you know here's the thing <laughs> today I was thinking well you know I can see in the, in the middle of this spasm I can see how on a hair's trigger I am sometimes with being offended. And the weirdest things offend me. <laughs> Fucking weird things. And, um, I, yeah, and I, I get PO'd about weird things. And it's usually about mad at myself. But just spitting nails mad. All right. Okay, so what? Everybody gets mad. Everybody gets frustrated. So what? I would never think to put someone else down because I'm having pain in my own heart. Yeah, I get really, really tired of the meanness. And I get tired of noticing it. I get tired of being triggered by it. And they said, you know, okay, part of being the observer self is when you're an observer self, you're not emotionally triggered. When you're emotionally triggered, it's something that's going on that you really need to take a look at. It doesn't mean it's in you. <laughs> not necessarily. It means you take a, need to take a look at it. It's up for review. So to close, here it is. I'm an old psych nurse. I can walk onto a psych unit, start talking with people, start interacting, review the charts. Sure, that'd be fun. But I can mingle with people with full on personality disorders and affective disorders. I can tell you who's schizophrenic, who's bipolar. Does it mean that I am those things? <laughs> no, it means that they're they're up for review. And I wouldn't be a very good psych nurse if I was 
always being triggered by other other people's yeah. troubles, right? And I'm a freaking veteran of this line of work. So when I'm triggered, I can assure you, it's, I would rather not be. <laughs> I am a placid, placid, and kind of goofily happy person, usually. It's just, <laughs> there are certain things you just probably shouldn't do around me because it's just not cool. <laughs> But I'm I'm pretty placid one way or the other. I'll, you'll just feel foolish. <laughs> and then I'll have a day. Well, you know what? I've spent years in that prison I just described of believing that the people around me not only are just self-managing, beautiful individuals, it wasn't that that I was thinking. They were out to get me. That any anybody can break out into this irrational hatred if if someone who is supposed to be here from 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 my protection is willing to harm me in such a way, then how can I expect kindness from anyone? How can I expect mercy from a stranger when I don't get it at home? From being we forward. That's a lot to get over. And I, I don't... It just is what it is. It was the effect it had on me. The effect that a personality style has on me. And it's obviously um, not compatible with me. And <laughs> readily available in the GP, if I may be so bold. So I'm really okay. I'm really. I'm getting. I really am. I'm really okay with. saying what I've been saying to myself since I was a teenager and realizing that I needed to maybe get involved in this male-female stuff that was going on that I didn't seem to know how to manage. It's so confusing, all of it. I would hold on to what my mom said like it was gold. Kathy, in this life, all you need is one true friend. That's it. Someone true. A real friend. If you have that, you have everything. And she could see it in me. <clears throat> I was not a social animal. I really needed connection. I, I hungered for it, and I did best when I was connected. I only have to be connected with one person. And it doesn't have to be like a, yeah, you know, when you come to the bathroom with me? No, it's not. <laughs> Some of my dearest friends I see maybe once a year. But a true friend, a real friend, it's gold. And I have that. I have that in spades in my life. And I want more. More and more and more. Why wouldn't I? It feels good. I love giving love and I love getting love. And I don't want to be around people who complicate my life and pull me into madness. And I consider recriminations and blame and that meanness, that's ma to me, it's madness. It does bad things to me. It, it makes no sense, and it's cruel, and it, I don't like it. So I'm going to hold out for those kind of people. If it's all the same with you. And, you know, it's an adventure. It's a flavor. 
that I taste coming off of somebody. And they're a stranger, but not for long. So, was it a tough day? Oh, well, <laughs> such is life. Some, some of them, there. I've had harder ones, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Because um, I still, okay, yeah, I still got a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> so I got shit news. <clears throat> so the fuck what? <laughs> the one rule about this is life goes on. And um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm guessing that this will allow me, encourage me, to um, solve problems in brand new ways. In ways I hadn't considered. Maybe because I didn't need to. That's what I don't like. That's not very elegant. Having to introduce a, a calamity or a drama in order to get me to move off the dime. Not cool. <laughs> I need to work on that. It's part of the discipline. <clears throat> it's also part of not, not being partnered. <laughs> not having someone closer. Because... Um, yeah, you can tell I kind of, la, 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 I don't really care, la, 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 yeah. I kind of resent being pulled down, so I, it's a, it's a delicate balance. It takes a, a tr it takes a true champion to tame me, to, to, to bring me into a, to an enclosed area and keep me there. <laughs> but I challenge anyone who's interested, who thinks they're up for it. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Let's make some magic. I really am ready. And I can't wait for my buzz cut. Bring it on. I'm ready. I can't wait. And I, I should I have die or should it be all not troll for like all time? <laughs> I think the answer is um, there are no rules. If I want to, I was thinking maybe neon pink right out of the gate. If I want, it's my hair. I can do what I want. Wah, wah. Thank you for coming along.